Hello everyone, it's Cameo. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing the finally fall tag today, even though fall is well underway. I just can't help myself. Um, so there are 10 prompts in the tag, and the first one is, in fall, the air is crisp and clear, name a book with a vivid setting. So for this, I have chosen Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. Um, this is a historical fiction novel inspired by the painting of the same name by Vermeer, and it's set in Delft in the Netherlands in the 17th century. It's a fictional imagining of the creation of this painting, and it follows a 16-year-old girl named Greet as she leaves her family to go work in Vermeer's household as a maid. Um, and over the course of the book, she gradually works her way into his studio, uh, cleaning the studio at first and then helping to mix his paints and ultimately posing for the painting. I really can't think of a book with a more vivid setting. I felt completely immersed in the cold northern atmosphere where the book takes place. Um, and I think that in part this is reflecting uh, the Vermeer's paintings, which are very famous for their lighting. Uh, but it's also really down to uh, Chevalier's narrator, who is uh, this 16-year-old girl named Greet. I think that Chevalier's characterization of Greet is so masterful, and she's exactly the kind of narrator I, I love to read from. This book is told in the first person, and she's just a very silent, independent, willful, young girl and she kind of reminds me of Jane from Jane Eyre actually but she has a sort of hardness to her and a, a clarity in the way that she perceives the world and because the book is told in the first person we really get to see her perspective and she pays such attention to the small details um, the the light and the atmosphere of the places that she lives in she really has a very artistic perspective on the world and an eye for colour and lighting and atmosphere, which is why Vermeer in the book comes to trust her so much. And you can really tell that she would have been a very good artist, a good painter, if the world that she lived in had provided her with those opportunities, which naturally doesn't because she's a woman. Yes, I would really recommend this one for a very vivid atmosphere. The second prompt for this tag is, nature is beautiful but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. So for this prompt I've chosen H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. Um, this was one of my favourite books from last year. I'm a big fan of nature writing in general, but particularly nature writing that has a heavy memoir element to it, and this does. It's basically a memoir about the author dealing with the death of her father by throwing herself into the world of falconry. She buys a goshawk and names it Mabel, and it's kind of a learning experience for both her and the hawk as they train each other in the ways of falconry. The book is also a sort of uh, biography of the author T.H. White, who wrote the Once and Future King books and also a book called The Goshawk, amongst other things. He was a falconer as well, and he was also sort of an unhappy, dissatisfied person. And Helen MacDonald talks about learning from his books in terms of falconry, but also relating to his unhappiness at this time in her life. So it's really a book about grief and finding a way through it. So the third prompt is, fall is back to school season, share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. For this book, I've picked A Passionate Sisterhood by Kathleen Jones. Its subtitle is The Sisters, Wives, and Daughters of the Lake Poets. So it focuses primarily on Dorothy Wordsworth, who was William Wordsworth's uh, sister, and also Sarah Coleridge, who was Samuel Taylor Coleridge's daughter. And I got this book when I was in the Lake District visiting Dove Cottage where the Wordsworths lived in Grasmere. And I was in the bookshop or the gift shop afterwards uh, looking for books on Dorothy Wordsworth because I find her more interesting than her brother. And the woman who was working in the shop 
could see that I was struggling to pick a book and she recommended this one and said that it was really engaging and read like a novel, which is very, very true. I'm glad she recommended it. It has taught me a lot about uh, not only the biographies of these women. Um, I've learned a lot from this book about how women's health issues, both physical and mental, were treated in the late 18th and early 19th century and especially the connection between those health problems and creativity. In the book, when these women became ill, a lot of times their doctors would tell them to stop writing and reading because they thought that the strain was basically worsening the problems when in fact, that's the last thing that would help these very intelligent, creative women. I love this book and would highly recommend it to anybody who's interested in either the like poets to get a better perspective on the, the background of their lives and the women who made them as successful as they were, and also the topic of women's health in this time period. So the fourth prompt is, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with people we love. Name a fictional family slash household slash friend group that you'd like to be a part of. Um, so for this one, I went back to one of my childhood favorites, which is called the Little White Horse by Elizabeth Googe. Um, this cover is quite horrifying, I think, um, and it's not the one that I had as, as a child, but um, that one has been read to pieces. This is a book about uh, a, an orphan in the roughly the Victorian period, I'd say, um, who moves from London with her governess and the little spaniel dog Wiggins uh, to her uncle's manor in the countryside and she kind of gets to know her estranged uncle and sort of solves some problems that he's been having with uh, people that live in the woods near their estate. Um, it's a quite a charming children's book. I really loved it when I was little. Um, Rereading it when I'm older I kind of have a few problems with the religious aspects, especially as they relate to gender. But other than that, I think that I really <laughs> wouldn't mind like spending time in this this setting, especially because of the the pets. It's mostly what I'm interested in. The, the her governess is quite is quite nice. She has this kind of hard but loving governess, and her uncle is kind of a big sort of oaf of a man. Um, and they also have a really nice. Uh, cook in the kitchen who's a fun quirky sort of character, but I'm mostly interested in the pets So she has a little spaniel named Wiggins as I said who is hilarious and very spoiled and they have a Cat that can write with its tail and communicates with people by drawing in the ash in the fireplace in the kitchen And they have a huge dog which we're led to believe is actually a lion that lives in the house named Rolf or Ralph I think and she has a pony named Periwinkle so I really wouldn't mind having all of these pets around me as, as my family. <laughs> the next prompt is, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. So I put a little pumpkin on top here, as you can see. And we have All Passion Spent by Vita Sackville West, the fifth Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Fifteen Dogs by Andre Alexis, Walden by Thoreau, and I think this is the most beautiful of the spines, like that's gorgeous. And then on top here is Edith's Diary by Patricia Highsmith, which is a great novel. And the next question is, fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. Um, I had quite a lot hard time picking for this one, but then it occurred to me that I could use Moby Dick by Hom Herman Melville, which is one of my favourite novels. It is single-handedly responsible for my obsession with whales. And actually I think that maybe in one way this isn't the best novel to pick for this prompt because it is not exactly a novel that relies very heavily on storytelling or narrative even. There is a thread going through it of course of Captain Ahab hunting the white whale Moby Dick that he wants revenge upon for eating his leg. But it's not actually a book driven by narrative at all. It is mostly little essays on whales and whaling. And I personally really love it. I love this, the writing style. Um, and I love this sort of e essay form that it takes. 
but I do think that Ishmael is a very intimate narrator. I feel like he's sitting right across from me in a pub somewhere at the seaside and he's sort of spinning a sailor's yarn about his time on a whaling ship and I I think that this is a really cozy book for some reason even though it takes place mostly in tropical settings and tropical waters when they're hunting sperm whales there but I think of it as just something to really cozy up with <laughs> in the autumn. The next prompt is the nights are getting darker share a dark and creepy read and I've really been looking for more of these in the autumn season because I don't usually read a lot of them but coming up to Halloween one gets in the mood for something spooky. So for this prompt I've chosen The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters which is a historical fiction novel told in the gothic tradition. It's set in 1940s post-war England in an old estate home. It follows a doctor whose mother used to work as a nursery maid in the house and he has come worked his way up from nothing to become a doctor and he really still resents his family uh, and their class for the privilege that they have. Um, his life becomes increasingly entwined with theirs and a lot of spooky stuff starts happening to the family and the house. It's really a book about decay. Um, it's about a way of life decaying and it's about a house decaying and also people's bodies and more so their minds decaying. It's a very spooky atmospheric read and it's perfect for this time of year. So the next prompt is, the days are getting colder, name a short heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. For this one I've chosen Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. Um, this is a Persephone book. Um, I think that they're a really good um, publisher to go to for cozy heartwarming reads, um, although I've read that um, they're the beautiful covers on the inside kind of dictate the tone of the story. So this one is quite lighthearted. The colors are really light and airy, so you can tell that this is going to be like a lighthearted read. This book is about a middle-aged governess named Miss Pettigrew, who's kind of out of work and down on her luck, and her employment agency accidentally sends her to the wrong address. So she gets embroiled in the life of this nightclub singer named Delicia LaFosse, who lives quite a scandalous life, having scandalous relationships, doing drugs, all the things that women are told that they are not supposed to be doing. Um, this book is set in the 1930s. Miss Pettigrew ends up sort of helping Miss LaFosse with her romantic problems, and they run all around London to nightclubs, and it's, it's, it's quite a lighthearted romp of a book. But I think that it has a lot of value as well. I really liked reading about um, a middle-aged character doing things like this. Uh, I think that's not very common. But I also think that it's really interesting to read about um, different ways that women could be at this time period. You have Miss Pettigrew who has done everything right, but where has it got her? She's very unhappy. And there's Miss LaFosse who's breaking all the rules about what a woman should be. And instead of judging her, uh, Miss Pettigrew kind of overcomes her in internalized misogyny to really rethink her own limitations and the limitations that women in her society have. So I really appreciated it for those aspects, although I should probably note that there are some instances, brief instances of anti-Semitism in this book, which kind of really jarred me as a reader, and I just think that that's something to think about. So the ninth prompt is fall returns every year, name an old favourite that you'd like to return to soon. For this I've picked The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Matsuo Basho. He was a 17th century um, Edo period Japanese poet and really quite famous for his haiku. And this book is written in a form called haibun, probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's a combination of haiku and prose narrative, usually uh, narratives about travel. So I really want to reread this soon because I associate autumn with travel, you know, the geese are flying away, and I think there's something quite autumnal about haiku. Um, so I just like give you an idea what it's it's like. Um, here I can 
you can see how the prose is interspersed with the, the haiku. And last of all, we have fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Show your favorite cozy reading accessories. So I have quite a few for this. I'm a very cozy reader. Um, first I'll show you some little candle holders that I've been using. I got these from Tiger a year or so ago. I think they're quite lovely. Um, <laughs> I'm having a hard time showing. Uh, this is what they look like. And when you put the candles in it, it really like shows off the silhouette of the, the little stag and the tree. And I think well, the tree is very autumnal. I think my favorite cozy reading accessory is my hot water bottle, which has a really cute little fuzzy owl, sleepy owl encasing it. And I just get really, really cold. So I love having a hot water bottle with me just tucked up with it while I'm reading. I also really like having tea or something to drink while I'm reading. Um, my favorite tea right now is Celestial Seasonings Sleepy Time Tea. I just, I love the taste of it, I really do, but I also just really aspire to be this sleepy time bear. I think that his life is so cozy and I want to be in it. Like he's like a little cat and he's eating his biscuits and stuff in his little fireplace. I think it's so cute. Um, and my new favorite thing to have while I'm reading is actually ginger wine. Um, I think it's so tasty and so autumnal, and if you mix it with whiskey, you can make a whiskey mac, which is my new favorite cocktail. <laughs> okay, everybody, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please feel free to subscribe or like this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!